even through the glass I can feel him shit I feel like crying <laughs> I'm like remembering the scene I wouldn't change the thing <laughs> why am I crying you know now you know how I love the movie uh, please close your eyes he begs his jaw tightening let me go <laughs> This is Tony's for today. I am going to do a, a movie and book review of Five Feet Apart. This is my first time reviewing a book and a movie, so bear with me if I say something wrong. Don't expect too much. But yeah, I'm going to do it now because from the very first time that I watched the movie, I knew that I want to make a review about it and so yeah I'm doing this now so before we start I'm going to tell you some informations about cystic fibrosis or CF actually this book is about awareness for cystic fibrosis and I'm really glad that I was able to watch and read it because I didn't know that such disease exists it opened my eyes to diseases like this that there are cases like cystic fibrosis that if you both have cystic fibrosis you can't be with each other you can't touch each other you can be near each other you can't comfort each other and more you have to be six feet apart always so cystic fibrosis well according to this it is a progressive genetic disease that causes persistent lung in infections and limits the ability to breathe over time in people with cf mutations in the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator gene cause the cftr protein to become dysfunctional so that is cystic fibrosis and now i'm going to search about b cipasha is that how you pronounce it I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. So it says here bis bisipasha or sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong. Burkholderia stenosipasha is an opportunistic pathogen particularly dangerous for cystic fibrosis patients. It can cause a severe decline in CF lung function possibly developing into a life-threatening system systemic infection known as Sepasha syndrome, antibiotic resistance and presence of numerous virulence determinants in the genome may be Sepasha extremely difficult to treat. So basically it's a bacteria and it is dangerous for people with CF to be near each other. And uh, for people with CF, as far as I know, there is still no cure for uh, a disease like this. So um, I really hope that soon they'll be able to find a cure. Five Feet Apart is very emotional and deep. And for me, it really touched my heart, especially knowing about this disease, certain disease that still doesn't have a cure. And... I didn't know that such disease exists that if you both have CF, you can't be near each other. So it really touched me actually. <laughs> I cried a lot even though I watched the movie like two or three times. I cried a lot and while reading the book, I also cried a lot. Seriously. So um, if you're going to ask me if the movie was close to the book, I'd say yes, maybe kind of like 70%. They've only um, altered some scenes and changed some scenes. And well, there are scenes that in the book that they didn't add. In altering some scenes, like for example, in the first part of, of the movie, after Stella's introduction, Stella was with her friends already. Camilla and Maya and in the book 
Stella wasn't with her friends right away. They were just coming into the room. So, like minor details. I'd say that they did a pretty good job in making the film because most of the scenes in the book are in the film and most of the dialogues there are the same as the book. So I, I have notes here about not all but some scenes that were altered and scenes that wasn't in the movie and scenes that I feel like uh, should have been in the movie So like I told you in the first part um, She was with her friends right away in the movie, but in the book she was not minor details so in the in the movie Stella was filming right and for for her fans and for her YouTube channel and there were messages there from her fans, comments, but it wasn't really shown in the close-up version that you can read in the movie. And I feel like they, they should add it. They should have shown the messages because for people with CF watching it, I think it adds hope. I th well, for me, because there were like, in the book, there were um uh messages from her fans saying that hang in there stella we love you marry me <laughs> sort of joke i've got cf and you remind me to always stay positive xoxo so yeah in my opinion only that's like in the chapter one and the next in in the book will first saw stella arriving to her room carrying her duffel bag and in the movie they didn't state that will saw stella that way it was shown in the movie that will uh saw stella in the hallway lurking as said by will <laughs> Also, um, in the movie, they didn't show Stella talking to her father um, in Skype or video chat. But I feel like they should have added that. But I kind of understand that they didn't add some scenes. of They didn't add that much scenes, Stella with her parents or Will with her mother. Because their main focus was Stella and Will. And... I guess they couldn't add that much since the movie was already two hours long. These are some of the few altered scenes. Like in chapter 5 in the book, Stella saw Will in the rooftop. And that's when Stella rushed to the rooftop because she was thinking that Will was maybe trying to be suicidal or something. But in the movie, it was shown that before Stella saw Will in the rooftop, she was talking to Camilla and Maya. But in the book, she wasn't talking to Camilla and Maya. That happened the next day, her talking to Camilla and Maya after the rooftop scene. I screenshot some of the chapters here since i still couldn't find a physical copy of five feet apart so i read it in ebook in chapter nine i felt like they should have added this stella's closeness to barb that um there's a scene here that um carefully i opened the door to the janitor janitor's closet this is in stella's pov <laughs> obviously Grabbing the paper towels from a packed shelf of cleaning supplies and trying not to wake her. Trying not to wake Barb. So, she hears me though and looks up, her eyes sleepy. You work too hard, I say, when she sees me. She smiles and opens her arms like she used to when I was younger and having a rough day at the hospital. I climb onto her lap like a child and wrap my arms around her neck, smelling the familiar safe vanilla scent of her 
So I feel like they should have added it because it, it kind of adds the closeness uh, of Barb to Stella. And reading this, it makes me happy that Stella is close with Barb because in the movie, I feel like uh, they've shown Barb as like annoying nurse or something, but I didn't see it that way. If I see Barb as a caring nurse who really cares for her patients. Yeah, something like that. Uh huh. Next is oh, this scene. This really touched me. Where um, Will rest going to Stella's room before her surgery, where he sang the song that Abby used to sing Stella before she goes into surgery. It's really touching well for me i feel like um you know cliche but it's touching for me and it's i'm going to read some of the passages here it says here um stella said his voice is deep soft i know in that moment even though it could not be more ridiculous that if i die in there i won't die without falling in love oh Oh, I think this was uh, an emotional moment. Will and her mom arguing, and I'm going to read this for you because I feel like they should have added this to show more about Will and her mother, their interactions, and this is it. This is in Will's POV. Dr. Hamid slowly backs toward the door, knowing this is her cue to leave. My eyes flick back to my mother and I glare at her. You know I'm a lost cause, don't you? You're only making it worse. No treatment is going to save me. Fine, she fires back. Let's stop the treatment. Stop spending the money. Stop trying. Then what will? She states at me, exasperated. You lie down on the tropical beach and let the tide take you? Something stupid and poetic? She puts her hands on her hips, shaking her head. Sorry, but I don't live in a fairy tale. I live in the real world where people solve their, her voice trails off and I take a step forward, raising my eyebrows, daring her to say it. Problems? Go ahead, mom, say it. It's the word that sums up what I've always been to her. She exhales slowly, her eyes softening for the first time in a long time. You are not a problem, Will. You are my son. Then be my mom. When I shout, my vision going red. When was the last time you were that, huh? Will, she says, taking a step closer to me. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to... you even know me at all? Have you looked at a single one of my drawings? Did you know there's a girl I like? I'll bet you didn't. I shake my head, the rage pouring out of me. How could you? All you see of me is my f, f disease. I can't say it. I point at all the art books and magazines stacked on my desk. Who is my favorite artist, mom? You have no idea, do you? You want a problem to fix? Fix how you look at me. We stare at, sh at each other. She swallows, collecting herself and reaching over to take her purse from off the bed. Her voice soft and steady. I see you just fine, Will. She leaves, closing the door quietly behind her. Of course, she left. I sit down on my bed frustrated and look over to see an elaborately wrapped gift, a big red ribbon carefully tied around it. I almost throw it out, but instead I grab it, ready to see just who she could possibly think I'd want. I rip off the ribbon and the wrapping paper to reveal a frame. I can't understand what I'm seeing. Not because... Where am I? Mommy! Not because I don't recognize it, because I do. It's a political cartoon strip from the 1940s, an original of the photocopy I have hung up in my room. Signed and dated. Ah! Where am I? Signed and dated and everything so rare. I didn't even think any still existed. Shoot. <laughs> Shit. I lie back on my bed, grabbing my pillow and putting it over my face and frustration I was feeling toward her transferring to myself. I resented so much the way she was always looking at me that I didn't realize I was doing the, the exact same thing. Do I know where she's off to now? 
Do I know what she likes to do? I've been so focused on how I want to live my own life. I've entirely forgotten she has one. It's me. Without me, my mom is all alone. All this time, I thought she would, she only saw my disease, a problem you fixed, but instead she was looking right at me, trying to get me to fight against it alongside her. When all I did was fight her tooth and nail. All she wanted was for me to stay and fight, when all I kept doing was getting ready to leave. I sit up, pulling down the photocopy and replacing it with a framed, one-of-a-kind original. She wanted the same thing as Stella, more time. A scene that I wish they, they would have shown in the movie too is when Stella fell off the icy water. Was that a pond? Stella, while in the, in the water, Stella saw her sister Abby telling her to live, telling her that Will is breathing for her and Will really loves her and that she should live and she should hold on. I think that they should have shown that in the movie since Abby is really important to Stella and that part, well, you know, <laughs> he get my point. But yeah, I feel like they should have shown it. And also this part, this, 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 this part is like the moment when Will said, finally, I've got you speechless. This is the part that Will surprised Stella. Since Stella wasn't able to see her lights. So Will made a way for her to see the lights. I'm going to read this to you because this is like a very emotional moment. So it says here, Finally, I've got you speechless, he says, his voice pouring out of the phone. He raises his hand, putting it up against the glass of the window. I weakly raise mine, resting it on top of his. The glass just the latest thing keeping us apart. I want to scream, stay. People in the movies are always saying you have to love someone enough to let them go. He shakes his head, swallowing, struggling to speak. I always thought that was such bullshit, but seeing you almost die. His voice trails off and my fingers curl against the cool window, wanting to smash it. But I can barely manage a knock. In that moment, nothing else mattered to me, nothing except your life. He presses harder to his voice shaking as he continues. The only thing I want is to be with you, but I need for you to be safe, safe from me. He fights to continue, tears streaming down his face. I don't want to leave you, but I love you too much to stay. He laughs through his tears, shaking his head. God, the freaking movies were right. He leans his head against the window where my hand rests. I can feel it. Even through the glass, I can feel him. Shit, I feel like crying. <laughs> I'm like remembering the scene. I will love you forever, he says, looking up so we're face to face. The both of us silently seeing the same pain in each other's eyes. My heart slowly cracks under the new scar. My breath fogs up the glass and one more time I lift a shaking finger, drawing a heart. Will you please close your eyes? He asks. His voice breaking. <laughs> I'm literally tearing up. I'm sorry. I'm being too emotional. <laughs> I'm crying. Oh. He gets me. <laughs> shit. Hey. <sighs> oh shit. Will you please close your eyes? He asks, his voice breaking. I'm not gonna be able to walk away from you if you're looking at me. But I refuse. <laughs> ah. He looks up, seeing the defiance in my face, but the certainty in his surprises me. Don't worry about me, he says, smiling through the tears. If I stop breathing tomorrow, know that I wouldn't change the thing. <laughs> Why am I crying? You know, now you know how I love the movie. Oh, 
I love him and he's about to leave my life forever so that I can have a life to live. Please close your eyes, he begs, his jaw tightening. Let me go. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm so sorry if I'm crying. Wait. <laughs> Why am I such a crybaby? Please close your eyes, he begs, his jaw tightening. Let me go. I take a moment to memorize his face, every inch of it, and finally I force my eyes shut as sobs rock my body, fighting with the ventilator. He's leaving, he will leaving. When I open my eyes, he will be gone. Tears stream down my face as I feel him walk away, much farther than the five feet that we agreed on. That was always between us. I open my eyes slowly, some part of me still hoping he'll be on the other side of the glass. But all I see are the twinkling lights in the courtyard, and the town car in the distance disappearing to the night. My fingertips reach up, shaking as I touch his lip print and the window. His final kiss goodbye. So this last part that Stella said that I touched his lip print on the window, his final kiss goodbye. This wasn't in the movie, but I feel like they should have added this where Will kissed the window and Stella was touching it. His last kiss goodbye. So basically that's um uh like close to the ending that part and the ending part in the movie is different from the book. In the movie, Stella's introduction was the ending and like them showing Will's back gazing. I think that was in the rooftop. But in the book, I feel like that's the that's the scene that I wish they added in the movie and I wish they didn't change because the ending is much more better in the book. In the book, Stella and Will saw each other again in the airport and they were five feet apart each other, stilling one, one foot. And that was not in the movie. I feel like they should have added it in the movie because I think it would be better if that was the ending scene. But, you know, we can't change anything anymore since the movie is already there. But, yeah, that's my point of view only. So I'm going to read you the ending part in the book. It says here, I turn around following her gaze. The hairs following um, her friend's gaze. The hairs on the back of my neck standing on end as my eyes travel down the long line of people. My heart begins to beat faster when my eyes land on Jason. And then I know. I know he's there even before I see him. Will. I stand frozen in place as he looks up and our eyes lock. The familiar blue that I've dreamed about for so long almost knocking me off my feet. He's still sick. Portable oxygen slung over his shoulder. His face gaunt and tired. It's almost a physical pain to see him like this, to feel my lungs filling anew when he can't. But then his mouth turns up into the lopsided smile and the world melts away. It's Will. It's really him. Sick, but alive. We both are. I take a deep, unhindered breath and walk over to him, stopping exactly six feet away from him. His eyes are warm as he takes me in. No portable oxygen, no difficulty breathing, no nose canola. I'm practically a different Stella, except for one thing, the smile at him, and take just that one more stolen step until we're five feet apart. <sighs> Satisfying ending for me. That was enough, that ending was enough. And that was just... So that's it guys, Um, that is my... <laughs> book and movie review of five feet apart now if you're going to ask me which i choose a book or the movie i'd always say that the book is much always well for me is always better than the movie because in the book 
it's much more detailed and in in the book when i read five feet apart i can see this is not in the movie i can see stella and will's point of view like for a certain scene their point of view why while this certain scene is happening i get to read and see it see it while in the movie they didn't you can't add uh will and stella's point of view that much so i'd go for the book but i also love the movie so but when it comes to details and all i'd say the book but all in all i love them both so yeah <laughs> the like <I'm> Philippine. <laughs> so yeah guys that is the end of my book review thank you guys for watching and um <laughs> okay <laughs> that is my mom guys anyway um yeah thank you guys for watching and i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope that oh my gosh see you in my next video if you haven't subscribed to my channel can you subscribe down below and click the bell button so you'll get notified when i'll upload my next videos thank you guys again for watching see you in my next video and keep smiling stay positive bye